have an application here for managing products. I can create new products or see the details of existing products or edit them. A pretty standard application here. Now I would also like to provide a REST API so that I can manage products outside of this HTML interface. So how do I do that? Now I already have a products controller which follows a RESTful style, so I could just use this, right? Just make a respond to block in here so I can respond to the HTML format and the JSON format. And for that, I'll just render out a JSON response listing out all the products for this index action here. And then I can make a products.json request and voila, there's an instant REST API, right? Well, there is a serious issue with this and that is versioning. It's important that an API stay consistent. For example, I have this released on attribute which returns the date that the product was released on. But what if I want to restore and return the time as well? And I rename this column to released add instead of released on. Suddenly I've broken any consumer of this API that used this attribute. So keeping your JSON API right alongside your HTML interface is often not a good way to go if you're trying to build a consistent API. Now there are several gems to help out with this problem. Versionist makes it easy to handle version APIs in the routing, and it includes several generators. Rocket Pants is another gem which can help with building a REST API. It includes versioning and a whole lot more. The README is really nice, so check it out for more details. Now in this episode, I won't be using a gem because doing this from scratch will give us a better understanding of how Rails routes work and how they can be applied to API versioning. So here are the routes for this application and it's pretty simple with a products resource. And what I wanna do is add a section of routes specifically for the API. So that way it stays separate from the HTML interface. So I'm going to do this using a namespace called API. And this means that any routes defined in here will be prefixed with the API path and any controllers will be found under an API module. Now you could also choose to add a subdomain constraint instead of using this API namespace, but this will work great for us here. Next, we have to decide how we want to do the versioning. One option is to just store the version as part of the URL. So that means we could do this with another call to namespace and say a version one so that any controllers or routes defined in here will be expected to be under that specific uh, namespace. So for now, I'll just say resources products to serve up our products in a restful style. Now under my controllers directory, I need to make a new folder here called API and another directory called version one. And then inside of here goes the products controller.rb file. So in here, I'll need to make a module called API and then another one called v1. And then I can place my controller class here called products controller and have it inherit from application controller. Now, alternatively, what I could do is have it inherit from maybe an API base controller if I want to share behavior between all various API controllers. And then of course, you could just fill this in with the actions you want to provide to your API. I'll just do that off camera here. So here I've just defined each action using a respond with call, so it responds in the JSON format. But this is a really simplified approach. You'll probably want to do something extra for your JSON API. And now when we visit API slash v1 slash products.json, there's our JSON API. Now currently this requires that one somehow specify the JSON format. You can see if I remove the JSON extension, there's no API response. So here's a little tip to make JSON the default format. Under the API namespace in the routes, you can add a defaults option and specify the format and set it to JSON for this. And now reloading the page, it returns the JSON response by default. So far, things are working great, but what if we need to make a change that will break the existing API? For example, what if we want to rename this released on column? So I'll generate a new migration here to change that products uh, released on column, like this. I'm just going to paste in the code for this migration file. It'll just rename the released on column to released at and make it a date time column. And then running rake db migrate will make that change. So now hitting reload in the browser, it now renamed the released on column to released at, and it is now a timestamp. So it's not a backwards compatible change. Now, hopefully you have some kind of automated system set up so you know when you accidentally break the API. So let's work on getting this version one of the API working again. Now it's a little bit tricky here because I'm using respond with in this controller. I'd prefer to replace this with something like Rabble like I show in episode 322. This way I have more control over exactly what attributes are returned in the JSON response. 
but I'm okay with doing a quick hack here to get something working, especially if it's well covered in automated tests. What I'm going to do is just make a new class inside of the products controller class called product and just have it inherit from the actual product model. So this way, any references to this product class in the controller will use this subclass instead of the original product class. And I can override a method such as as JSON in here to handle any behavior differently just for this specific version of the API. So I can call super to get the original JSON hash, and I can merge on any other attributes or make any other changes I want, such as adding a released on attribute, which will be the products released at, um, turned to a date type. One thing I forgot to do in this as JSON method call is give it an options hash as an argument. So now when I reload this page, I have a released on attribute, and if I had automated tests, I should be back in the green now. However, I still have this released at attribute, which I think is a nice benefit because this way it'll ease the transition for someone who still has the old API. Technically, at this point, we don't really need to release a new version of the API, but if you get enough of these hacks and deprecations, you'll probably want to. To release a new version, we can just copy the uh, app controllers API slash v1 directory into the app controllers API slash v2. And then going into the routes file, we can just copy this version one namespace and make a version two. Now, if there's a lot of duplication here of the same routes, you might want to make a lambda and then just pass that same lambda block to each of these, but that's only if the routes are exactly the same. And then we can just go to the version two products controller here and remove any extra hacks that we might have and change that module name to version two. And now visiting version two of the API shows us the cleaner API without the deprecated released on attribute. Now, when you follow this approach to versioning, it might look like there's a lot of code duplication going on here. The products controller in version two looks nearly identical to the products controller in version one but I don't consider this a violation of the dry principle because it's important to ask yourself, if I change the code in one version, will I need to change it in the other as well? And that's not really the case because you will rarely go back to an older version and need to bring a feature back from a newer version. You're likely going to have different code in the older version to make it backwards compatible. Also, you'll likely remove an older version at some point, so doing extensive refactoring here I don't think is worth it. However, if you do want to, you could make a different kind of superclass here with the shared behavior that they both inherit from. Next, I want to talk about how we specify the version number. Right now, we just put it inside of the URL path, which is simple and direct, but many don't consider it to be a best practice. GitHub, for example, made this change, so instead of passing the version number through the URL, they pass it through the accept header. So how would we do something like this in our application? So going into my routes file, I'm going to replace the namespace with a call to scope, so that way you can specify what module to use, and also specify constraints. And the constraints logic is kind of complex, so I'm going to move this into another class. So I'll instantiate it here, I'll call it API constraints, and then I'll say the version should be one. And then I'll do something similar for version two here, just replacing the version numbers. And I also want to add another option to pass into here of default and set that to true because I want this route to be the default one if no version is specified. So I still need to define this API constraints class. And I'm going to do that inside of the lib directory here. Just call it API constraints.rb. Now I'm just going to paste in the code for this class it's pretty simple. All I'm doing at the top here is extracting out the options into instance variables, and then I'm providing this matches method, which the Rails router will trigger for the constraint, and I'm just checking if it's the default version or if the request accept header matches that given uh, version string or whatever you want this version accept header to match. So you'll want to replace this with your application name or whatever you want it to be. And then for convenience, I'm just going to go to the top of my routes file and require that API constraints file there. So now after restarting my application, if I visit the API slash products path, notice no version number in the URL here, it will uh, return the default version, which is going to be version two. And then in the terminal, I can use curl to specify the accept header. I'll just paste in the command for this, specifying the header option to accept that specific version number, version one here, at the API products path. And this returns a response which includes the released on attribute, which is the first version. 
Well, that finishes up this episode on making a versioned API. Thanks for watching. In this week's pro episode, I will take a look at Meteor, which is a JavaScript framework for building rich client-side applications. There I will make the same raffling application which I did in previous episodes to compare it with Backbone.js and Rails. Even though this isn't specifically about Rails, I think it's important for us to be aware of new technologies and learn from them. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.